Okay, let's go. Okay, just a reminder, you're not meant to start with the multiple choice. The advice is always to do the main questions first, warm up and come back to the multiple choice. But we're doing multiple choice right now. And we start with this question about the distance travelled can be found from one of these quantities here. Area under velocity time graph, area under acceleration time graph, gradient of a force time graph, uh, gradient of a velocity time graph. Well actually, the closest thing to the correct answer is A here. But the area under a velocity time graph is the displacement, not the distance travelled. But as I say, it's the closest thing to the correct answer, so we'll pick that. Some more straight book work. Which one of the following is a scalar? So we're looking for the quantity that doesn't have direction information. Accelerations definitely do, displacements do, forces do. All of those things can be represented by an arrow in a diagram and therefore they have direction. Now work is force times distance but actually work is energy and energy does not have a direction therefore it'll be work. Question 3 then, a car pulls a trailer of weight 2500 newtons with a force of 20 newtons for a distance of 8 kilometres along a horizontal road. How much work is done by the car in pulling the trailer? So crucially work is force times distance. And the crucial thing here is which force are we talking about? Well it's the force acting on the trailer in the direction that it's being displaced. Okay, so we need to maybe stop and think a little bit about that. So, crucially, the trailer is being pulled horizontally. So this weight is not the important force. It's the 20 newtons pulling it horizontally. That's the crucial one here. It's horizontal displacement, so it's a horizontal force we're interested in. So our equation becomes 20 newtons times 8,000 meters. Again, you can see in the answers uh, how they're both allowing for you to get your unit conversion wrong and use the wrong force. But we're not going to fall into their trap. And I obviously here have the benefit of being able to rewind it if I got it wrong previously which you will never know. Okay, so it's C. So here we have a person who's standing, um, according to the question, at point C here. And they're in a train carriage that's going around a sharp bend to the right. The person jumps up and says, nearest which mark point is the person most likely to land? Well, as the train goes this way, all of these points will go this way. However, the person will obey Newton's first law and continue while they're in the air to move in a straight line. So they will follow this path, which as you can see will mean they will either land on line B or line A. So I can't really see how you can specifically choose um, one or the other. The mark scheme says A, but both are valid answers. Okay. Question 5. Which of the following units could be used for power? So you always do this by trying to figure out an equation uh, for the quantity that you're looking for. So we know that power is work over time. 
and work is force times distance and F is MA so the top line um, here is going to give us mass so we get kilograms times acceleration meters per second squared times the distance which is meters again and we're going to have to divide by this T so we're going to also have seconds to the minus one and then we just combine all that and we get kilograms and then because we've got meter, meters appearing twice then we get meters squared and we've got seconds to minus two seconds to minus one so we get seconds to minus three there okay so it's C Ball is thrown straight up in the air and caught when it comes down. Which graph best shows the velocity of the ball from the moment it is released until just before it is caught? So first of all, they're asking for velocity. Remember, velocity is a vector. We need to think about how that's going to manifest itself when a ball is going up and then later coming back down. Now the crucial thing is that there's going to be a change of direction there which means the velocity is going to have a change of sign well this one only has positive velocities and so does this one so it's one of these other two and the crucial thing is that it's falling under gravity so it'll have a constant gradient belonging to the fact that it's always got a gradient of g so this one doesn't have a constant gradient that leaves us with this one Okay. Question 7. A building has five floors. The windows on successive floors are separated by the same vertical distance. A brick is dropped from a window on each floor at the same time. The bricks should hit the ground at... So we've got choices between decreasing time intervals, equal time intervals, increasing time intervals and the same time. Right, so firstly, I'm only going to draw two of them because all of them will behave exactly the same way. Both of these bricks will have G acting on them, so they will both accelerate if we ignore air resistance and behave exactly the same way. So the second one will never be able to catch up with the first one. They will always be separated as they're falling by the height between the two floors. And that will be true for all five of them. So the crucial point is that when the first one hits the ground, the one behind it will be moving quite quickly. And each time another one hits the ground, the one behind it will be moving quicker than it was previously. Okay, so I'll put some letters on to try and help me explain what I'm saying here. When A hits the ground, B will be moving quite quickly. When B hits the ground, C will be moving quicker than B was when A, when A hit the ground. And this, will, this progression will mean that each one covers the remaining distance that it has to catch up quicker than the previous one. So we would expect the time intervals between the thuds of them hitting the ground to decrease because the speeds are going up all the time. So we would expect the answer to be A. Okay, question eight is just straight book work. All ductile materials are also brittle, hard, malleable and stiff. And the crucial one there is malleable. It's its ability for it to be worked with a hammer. Now a ductile material can be stretched out into wires so it's not going to be brittle because you can't really get plastic deformation in most brittle materials fracture um, without having plastic deformation. It's not going to be hard, it's not going to be stiff. It's going to obviously be, sorry, malleable. Malleable, remember, comes from uh, malleus, which is like a uh, hammer, hammerable. So malleable things are, can be beaten out into shapes. And so it's the same kind of properties. Ductile stretching in a plastic way, malleable 
working in a plastic way. Question 9 um, gives us some names of forces acting on a plane and asks us which of the following shows the correct two relationships if the aircraft or the airplane sorry, is climbing at a constant velocity. Well crucially if it says constant velocity we're talking about obeying uh, Newton's first law which says that if something has a constant velocity the forces on it are balanced. So we would expect the horizontal forces to be in balance and the uh, vertical forces to be in balance. So we're looking for a relationship where that's true. Okay, so we've got lift, lift and weight and we've got thrust and drag. We're looking for them both to be equal. And so nice and straightforward, it's D. Question 10. The airplane is now flown at a constant altitude but an increasing speed. Which of the following pairs of forces will have the same magnitude? So constant altitude relates to the vertical forces. If it's not rising or falling in the vertical direction, then the vertical forces are in balance. So we're looking for the vertical pair. So it's left and weight. So again, we're talking D.